One of the most frustrating things when watching and creating um, YouTube and online videos for coding is getting everyone's environment set up the exact same way. So, for example, Linux, Windows, and Mac are the three main operating systems. And all three of these systems have a slightly different file system. They have slightly different um, ways to install different softwares onto them. And Windows has a different, a whole entirely different shell that it runs as opposed to the bash shell that Linux and Mac would run. For that reason, I wanted to create this video to get everyone that watches my videos on the same page. The best way that I could think of to do this, given the fact that I do all my tutorials on a Mac, is to get the Windows users who are running this completely different um, terminal to be able to use the Bash um, shell. And what I mean by that is basically the shell that Linux and Mac run. So if we open up iTerm, um, this is on my Mac right here. I can type commands like ls to list out some of the different files and folders that I have on my computer. I can type pwd. These are all what we call bash commands if you're not familiar. And the problem is if we go to Windows, let me open up a little virtualization I've got going on here. Um, this is a Windows 10 instance on my computer. It's actually running on my Mac right now. And if I go to the command prompt, we can type this in here. Here is the command prompt for Windows, and this is running the file system that I have on my Mac right now, but it demonstrates the point perfectly. So if we wanted to put these side by side, let me quickly do that. So this is the Windows uh, command prompt, and I'll make sure and put some labels on this in the video. And then if we open up our Mac command prompt, right here. We're actually running the same file system but it's set up a little bit differently and also we have slightly different commands that we can run. So if we come over here and this is my Mac we can type pwd to see where we're at and you can see that we have we're at the path users Zach. Um, and then if we come over here and we try to type pwd of course, we can't do it because um, Windows is not running the Bash shell. We also cannot do ls like we did earlier, and we can't um, type clear like we would on a Mac. So all of these things, um, if we went on the Mac and typed clear, it would clear the screen. Over on Windows, we'd have to type cls, and to print the contents of the directory, we would type dir rather than ls to get that output. So you can see that they're very different commands and if I were to try to teach um, the different commands for every different operating system these videos would take hours and hours um, despite the fact that they're already hours and hours. So in order to get us all on the same page what we need to do for you Windows users um, is to come down to your little search bar here and type in turn on features and this only works if you're on Windows 10 um, but I'm going to have to assume that uh, any Windows users out there that are wanting to watch my videos are running Windows 10 uh, I apologize if I'm not accommodating to your particular system so we click the turn features on in the Windows um, control panel and then this little dialog box is going to open up. Within this dial dialog box we'll scroll down to the bottom and find the little icon that says Windows subsystem for Linux. Click the check mark 
click OK. And while this is loading, what this is going to do is essentially allow you to write bash commands or run a bash um, shell that runs in Linux and Mac on your Windows machine. So we'll restart now. You can see that since I'm running this within my Mac, it's not actually restarting my entire computer, which is handy. We can go down into the search bar again and type the store. Open up the Microsoft Store. Within the Microsoft Store, click the search button and type in Ubuntu. This is the app right here. We want the Ubuntu app. And click Get. When this downloads, you can launch it. And it's going to perform some initial installations. Just wait for this to finish, and then you can start using it. When the initialization is done, you need to just enter a Unix username. This will actually be what your file system uses to uh, indicate the home directory, so make sure that it makes sense. For me, I'm just going to put Zach. Then it will ask you for your password, so type that in. When everything is complete, you now are running a bash shell on Windows. I've opened up two different terminals. On the left, we have our bash shell, which we just entered um, through the Ubuntu app. And on the right is our regular Windows command prompt that is still running um, the old shell. Now, before I get into this, let me just say that um, I've created an entire video that kind of walks you through the differences between Windows, Linux, and Mac. You can see it up here in the top right corner of the video. I would really suggest watching that to kind of understand what I'm about to get into. All right, anyways. Um, Let's take a look at where your files are stored once you have enabled this subsystem for Linux. So generally, you're going to have your files in the users uh, and then whatever your name is. So if I type dir, um, you know, you'll see all of your files, your documents, uh, your desktop, etc. Right now, since I'm running this Windows machine on my Mac, I actually don't have anything in these particular folders, but let's go ahead and just put put one in there for um, for the sake of the video. So we'll CD into documents, um, see what's in there. Looks like we got pretty much nothing. And then let me just create a file. So some text into text file dot text just a stupid little file that we can use. So now when I um, type dir, you can see that we have a text file in the documents section of our file system. All right, so if we go over to this bash terminal, you might wonder, okay, so now I'm permanently using bash for um, my Windows machine, so I need to know how to get to my files. Well, you would think that this little tilde, which represents the home directory, so if we type pwd, it's in home and then zach, you'd think, okay, that's where my text file.txt would be. So let's try to ls that out. And you can see we get absolutely nothing. So the reason being is when you set up this subsystem for Linux, it actually puts it in a mount folder. So if we go to the topmost directory of Linux, so this is the complete root directory. And let's ls. You can see that these are the file or these are the folders that come at the root of the Linux directory. So what we want to go into is this mount folder. So normally if you attach like a drive to a Linux machine, it's going to go in dev. But in this case, the way that it's set up is it's going to be in the mount folder. 
So let's ls into there, and you can see that our C drive is put in this mount folder. So we'll go into C and ls, and I know that there's some interesting messages here because we have some permission issues. Let me, let's just type sudo before the ls command. And now we're getting some better uh, messages here. So we can see all of the files that are in this particular directory. So let's go into the documents, or actually not the documents. We want to go into users. So users and then ls out there, or we'll do sudo ls so we don't get all these permission denied errors. Um, and you can see that I have a Zach folder, so we'll cd into Zach. And finally, sudo ls, and you can see that we're starting to get somewhere. We're starting to find the files that are on um, the user's Zach documents in the C drive. But we need to go into documents, cd documents, and sudo ls. And here we go, we have found the text file dot text that we had created before. So basically what this means for you as a previous Windows user is everything in your computer is going to be stored under the mount slash C for the C drive. And so you see the path right here after that first initial path is the same exact path that we see over in the uh, default Windows shell. So this is just a brief um, overview of what this subsystem for Linux does. And obviously, um, in the subsystem for Linux, we'll be typing bash commands rather than the command.exe as we did with the original Windows command prompt. So that includes everything from PWD to print the working directory, you can type clear to clear the screen. Um, you can cat out the contents of a file and so on and so forth. So the reason that we did this is number one, to get you as a Windows user on the same page as me when I'm teaching concepts on a Mac. And number two, it's just to make your life a little bit easier. So when you go on to a different system like say you are uh, creating a server for your website or something and you have to open up a Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services uh, virtual private server and when you get on that server you're going to have to type Linux um, bash commands so it kind of just makes your life easier because on Mac you'll be typing bash commands on Linux you'll be typing bash commands so there's no reason why you shouldn't just type your bash commands on Windows since this awesome new uh, feature of Windows 10 is available to you. Hopefully you found this video helpful um, and it will get you going with the rest of my tutorials. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.